Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another recap of the US Olympic trials. And this is technically day, I want to say day nine. Let's double check it, double check it. Um, according to um, the According to Peacock, but it's really day seven. And then tomorrow will be the last day of the Olympic. Tomorrow will be the day that the U.S. Olympic trials will conclude. So the rest of the finals will take place tomorrow. But today was definitely a finals heavy day. So we finally got to some things. So um, before I go on, the first thing that took place, and I think I mentioned in my video from before, the men's and women's um, 20K race walk already took place, but that took place way earlier on the day. So if you want to look at who won that, just go on Peacock and there's separate events for that. But the first official track and field event that was part of the whole entire recap video that you can watch on peacock um was a men's discus throw and again i'm not as familiar with some of the field athletes um the notable athlete who did get first place and has been in the world stage before was andrew evans um and he does have the olympic standard the person in second place does not so he'll have to go by world rankings and whatnot or you know compete in another event prior to the olympics to try to get that olympic standards um, which are based on points when it comes or the length of your throwing when it comes to um, the um, discus throw. And I'll go ahead and put the Olympic standards on this on the screen here so you can see what that is again. Because again, it is very, very important to have the Olympic standards along with winning. Otherwise, you're going to be in a waiting period and you have to wait for the Olympic committee to basically seal your fate. Um, and it's easier to just have the relief of already having the standard and know you're going. Anyway, and then third place with just was Joseph Brown, and he does have the Olympic standard with, with the bronze. So after that event, we did have our first semifinal event that was not a final, was the women's 100 hurdles. And this was a little bit more truth-telling of who should be in the finals. I mentioned before that the first heat, there really, there was really no competition there because so many people scratched that everyone pretty much qualified. So, um, still the favorites is going to be um, Sia Russell. And I apologize if I'm saying her first name wrong because I'm not as familiar with her, and she's part of the new blood um, that is, you know, going to be hopefully growing the sport for the United States. Um, and then Kenny Harris, and then. Um, Christina um, Clemens were the noble names that made it. And um, the, um, oh, sorry, Lolo, Lolo Jones did not make it. And it, that's not really a surprise. So there's that. Um, and so that final should be pretty good. Um, I will say this, I was kind of curious about it. One of the people who's pretty, who's been pretty dominant in the sport, who's of the war, who's more in the world, um, is um, oh Camacho, uh, Camacho Quinn. I forgot her first name, but she actually can, she competes for Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico actually has their own um, representation when it comes to the Olympics. So I am curious to know how that will go because. I mean, there isn't that many athletes that do that. So I am curious on that. So anyway, um, we'll see how that goes when it comes to that event once the Olympics happen. But those are the people who are in the, who are going to be advancing to the finals. I know I mentioned um, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, um, but that is kind of one of the main people that has been really really kind of dominant in this sport and then also in the recent years um one of the athletes from um barbados has been doing her thing too so there's that okay so then the next event was a women's high jump i'm sorry women's long jump and the favorites were pretty much favoriting so tara davis would um would haul she won she was struggling at the beginning. She scratched a couple times at the beginning. 
but then once she found her rhythm she found it and just kind of you know she was done um and then jasmine moore was second um she was able to get the olympic standard for this event and then third was another athlete by the name of um Monet nelson and she went from not being in contention to like her sixth row got her for the win um so all three athletes have the olympic standard and so they're going to paris and the clear favorite is tara davis um, woodhall um so then that's it for that next um we have the women's 200 and this was the final this final was interesting um if you were to pick anyone who got second or third yeah it was kind of anyone's race and it was stacked but man it it, it kind of got crazy towards the end so gabby thomas won and she killed it she ended up um finishing at 2181 and then second place i know we're thinking this shakiri richardson no 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 she was actually shut out in this event she got fourth place so um i, I hate to be the le <laughs> the bearer of bad news but she even though she's still going to the olympics she's only going to be doing the two events she's going to be doing the 100 meter and the four by four um sorry the um yeah the four by four the um i think that's what's called like the, the relay the relay for the 100s um, but Brittany Brown, who I kind of mentioned in the previous video to look out for, she got second place and said personal best. And then we had Mackenzie Long, you know, and they did share an amazing story behind what she has going on. Her mom passed away recently and she's going to be able to go to the Olympics. So that's a pretty big deal. And so that was a cool story behind it. Abby Steiner will not be there. Uh, well, yeah, no, she won't be there. And I'm kind of not surprised because Abby Steiner's just coming back from injury. And then I don't know if they're going to have Jenna Prandini on the relay team or not. I know a lot of times they have a lot of these women do the relay team. But the reason why I'm not sure about Abby Steiner is because even though she's in that um, bottom, like, like, fourth fifth sixth for the 200 i don't know if that qualifies you for the 100 because you also have that for the 100 how they do that but maybe they'll still utilize her as to get through one of the heats because i know they usually have the united states has a stacked team to get people through the heats and then they have like their you know the strongest help them with the final when it comes to the relay so we may or may not see them there not so sure but anyway that is what we have so far and then the second half of the two-hour show we have one more semi-final and then three more finals so this again was a finals heavy day so then the next semi-final was the women's 400 um, hurdles and for this event um the clear the clear um favorite is still sydney mclaughlin lombroni and she destroyed her heat it was it was it was not even close she actually set the world lead so yeah there's that and then anna um Co cochran she also did her thing in her heat and set a personal best and then um, Shamir Little did a season's best. But I will say that Shamir Little's um, run was shaky. It was shaky. Um, it, it, she seemed very unsure. She did make it to the final. But and because her heat was probably the easiest, I would say, relatively when it came to the athletes out of everyone. Because she didn't really have any former um, Olympians in her heat. Um Sydney was Sydney's was probably the most challenging because she had former um, Olympians in her heat by you know by the way of the um, Dalia Muhammad, but she Dalia Muhammad turned Muhammad turned it on at the right time and got second place, but she was not really that close 
to um to um Sydney Sydney um, McLaughlin Lebroni. So there is that. Um, so the final should look good. I'm thinking it's probably going to be Sydney, Anna, and third place is a gamble of who's going to end up going to Paris because Shamir Little, that semifinal made me nervous. And Dalil Muhammad, she hasn't been healthy for some time. I'm thinking this is the year where she actually is healthy. But I don't know because I still haven't seen enough yet. Um, because she isn't racing the way she used to. She's, you know, she is on more of the tail end of her career. And she had a lot of complications, I will say, since 2020. Because um, what also kind of assisted in her decline in her rankings and her, you know, performing the way she was performing before is she had some COVID complications. Like, she got COVID twice and it, it, it laid her out in both times. So kind of scary. But anyway, that's kind of what we're, how that is. And um, it should be exciting to see what happens tomorrow. Uh, I'm assuming this event might be the primetime event tomorrow just because of um, Cindy McLaughlin LeBroni. She's kind of like the face, um, another major face of track and field. And um, the other two main kind of events happened yesterday, like happened today. So that concludes that. Um, then the next final that we had was a women's shot put. And kind of to really no one's surprise, Chase um, Jackson um, is punching her ticket to Paris. And then Raven Saunders, they're going to Paris. Um, and then the person who was in third place is Jada Ross. Um, and all of them have the Olympic standard. And then Maya Lesnar, Brock Lesnar's daughter, um, is not going, but, um, it was cool to see, um, her make that attempt to go, but she, it just wasn't enough. Like she, um, she actually, um, was nowhere close to getting it. So there's that. Um, and after her third throw, she really had no way of catching up, basically. Um, so after that, we had the women's 10,000 meter race. And while this race was happening, we actually got some updates in reference to the men's steeple chase that took place, the final. The um, gentleman, I want to gonna just double check one more time. Okay. The gentleman who got third place, he actually did do another event. Um, who, who, um, so James Corbin, he actually did end up doing another event, um, after the Olympic trials over the weekend. And she, he actually met the Olympic standards during that event. So he is going to Paris. So Evan, Evan Jagger, he, they might still have him go just in case one of the athletes get injured, but he's pretty much not going to be in the Olympics this year. So there's an update with that, that they provide to us while the um, women's 10,000 meter finals was happening. And the women's 10,000 meters, what was interesting with this is with the finals, it's always a pretty stacked field and you don't know who's all competing usually. So what we had here, um, it was very stacked. We had some women who ran the marathon who was in this. We had some women who ran the 5,000 who was in this. And then we had some people, their specialty is this event and this event only. So how this event concluded, we had, um, and also I would recommend watching the last, like, I would say two minutes of this event because it did get exciting. It, the racing started racing. Parker Valley, which you should, if you don't know who that is, you should know who that is from the 5,000 race. She was the one who braved it and set the um, pace the whole entire time for that race to get fourth place. And we found out while she was also doing this race, because a lot of these athletes are doing multiple races, 
and the way the schedule might be, some of these athletes may not be doing both. So she might end up, we might still see her in the 5,000 um, meter race, but we may not need to now because we, she's going to Paris because she was smarter about this strategy this time and executed her plan towards the end of the race and she did end up getting second place so she's going to paris the only tricky thing is with this particular race she does not have the olympic standard yet but for the 5000 she does so there might be something that happens with that um and then um clarissa schweizer who got third place in the 5000 also got third place in this race but she she does not have the olympic standard yet but because she has been to the olympics before uh she has time to meet those standards and she probably does have the world rankings to get her there so i'm not really as concerned about that i think she, what she'll probably do is try to get the standards first and so and then the person who ended up getting fourth place she actually I'm trying to remember, but I'm almost positive she was the same person who got fourth place at the Women's Olympic Trials for the Marathon. So that fourth place is not, it's kind of haunting this woman, but hopefully, you know, maybe it'll work out for her where she finally gets past that, just barely missing it. Um, but the person who won um, was Winnie um, Kalana. Kalana? Uh, Kalani? I think it's Kalani. Um, she is a U.S. citizen currently, but she's actually a, a Turian, um refugee who's been in the States for a while. She got her U.S. citizenship about three years ago. So she is a clear favorite to represent the United States and win this event for us, or at least medal for this event. And she is the only one that had the Olympic standards on this field. So there is that. Um, and then the final event of the evening, the main event was the men's 200 meter race. And I will say this to me, I feel like this race ended exactly how I thought it was going to end, but it was a good, it, sometimes a non-surprise predictability is a good thing and it worked out exactly the way it did so the same people who are representing us for the united states for the men's 200 were the same people who represent us from the men's 200 for tokyo and I, it probably does is no surprise noah lyle's won but i would highly recommend checking out this race because he had to fight for that win kenny benarik almost won Kenny Benarek, there's a rivalry that's brewing between Kenny and Noah Lyles, and it's really, really good for the sport. And they're push, they're they're sharp. Iron is sharpening iron, so it's amazing. So Kenny was leading the race most of the way, and then Noah Noah caught him at the end and set um, the world lead and also the meet record. So Michael Johnson's 200 meter world um 200 meter um olympic trials record u.s trials record is broken that is now noah lyles and then arian knighton got third and even though the olympic trials is all the racing he's done he still killed it and did it and he got a uh, season's best with this race as well and all three of them have the olympic standard and then unfortunately outside the bubble again was Christian Coleman. Um, he started off great, but we, and, and it's, it's kind of no surprise because we kind of knew that Christian Coleman's, um, this is not Christian Coleman's strong event. He's more of, really, he's a 60 meter expert. 100 meters, that used to be his thing, but Noah Lyles has kind of took that over. And Kenny, Kung Fu Kenny is also there too. Kung Fu Kenny is running better than ever and so we might we probably will see christian coleman for the relay but that's it um he's not going to be there for the individual races unfortunately but um yeah so that concluded um the track and field events and 
I will say this out of all the events so far when there's a lot of finals because this and I'll say this even last week when I was watching this when there's a ton of finals the two hours goes by so fast it doesn't feel like it's two hours it's so much quicker because you're like okay this is the conclusion I don't know if anyone else feels that way but I do but anyway um tomorrow will be the last day that I'm reviewing this um because it's the last day of the Olympic trials and um next time we'll talk about this the athletes will be your parents <laughs> uh please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content on this though it's your girl sharon aka the male nostalgic runner and i will see you next time bye